Hello and welcome to Flat Cat Fedora IRL. I'm your host Mark and today is brought to you by Dante on Tire and Auto Service in Hanford, California. We'll see their commercial in a little bit, but for now let's talk cameras. Now with COVID-19 coming to a, uh, a point where they're starting to allow people to go back outside again and lift the stay at home orders, people are going to want to go out there and start taking pictures. And there are a few different ways to go. Now, aside from using your cell phone, or an action camera or a point and shoot, we're going to talk about the type that people usually want to get when they think of cameras. And that is the interchangeable lens camera. And we have two types here we have digital and we have film. So let's look at film first. And film, the neat thing about film is that you can find these cameras in a range of prices. And I'm not just talking, you can find cameras like every Pentax is going to be a certain price. No, you're going to find the same camera going from yard sale $3 to vintage camera store 100 and some dollars. It all depends on the quality and the upkeep and the condition of the camera itself. So keep that in mind when you look for cameras. Uh, I'll give you a quick look at these. This is a Minolta. There's an X370. It is a fully automatic DS, oh, sorry, fully automatic SLR, which means single lens reflex. And you can change out the lenses. You'll see the mirror on the inside. If you notice the mirror on this one, really, really, really clean. It's a well maintained camera. And if you're getting into film photography, you want to look at everything. You want to test to make sure the shutter works. You want to make sure that it's the battery compartment where the battery goes, not corroded because they don't make these cameras anymore. So these are what's out there. And just like buying a used car, the more you invest, the more you should really take a look to make sure it's working. Spent five bucks on it, the gamble. It's also the same as buying yourself a small little Wendy's meal. Shout out to Wendy's. Now, this is Minolta and this is Canon. Again, both of these are film cameras. And why are they film cameras? Well, that's because they actually take 35 millimeter film. Lots of different types of film cameras, but that's what we're going to talk about today is these film cameras. Um, relatively looking at it, some of these cameras, you can use their lenses on new ones. Like for instance, this particular camera, the lens here will go on a Canon digital EOS camera. Now, will it give you the same sharpness? No. Will it give you um, a lot of bells and whistles? because of the old camera? No, but it'll give you a vintage look. And more importantly, if this was a lens you didn't have on your new camera, let's say all you have is a prime lens and you want something with zoom, you can either go to the store and buy a brand new lens and cost a couple hundred, or you go out to the uh, auction, find a decent used camera, and maybe spend, you know, at the most, maybe 50, 60, $70. Uh, if you go to a vintage camera shop, maybe $100. And you're going to save yourself some money. You'll have a film body and you'll have an actual lens that will work on your camera. Now, that being said, again, this is all about looking at what, you, at what you're buying. And with film cameras, it's very important to do that. If you don't know a whole lot about these, try to stay in a low ballpark for buying a camera at a swamp meet or something or a yard sale. If you're going to try to get a lens for your digital. And at least make sure you look up online from the forums, from your particular camera manufacturer, what lenses are good, what lenses are not. Will a certain mount work? Because like with Canon, there was more than just one mount. Nikon's a little different. Nikon only really had one mount. So for the most part, a lot of their old lenses will work on the higher end cameras that they have today. But that's film. Now let's get to digital. We're going to look at digital cameras and there's two camps now that a lot of people look at. The first camp is the DSLR. The DSLR holds a lot in common with these cameras. Uh, the first thing is that if you look at these cameras, the film ones, you'll see they have a mirror on the inside. That mirror points up to a glass optical prism that shows you what the lens sees. This is so that you can see exactly what the lens sees and you know what you're taking a picture of. This is the same thing. 
you have a mirror. Again, another prism with an optical prism and a viewfinder so that you can see what you're taking a picture of through the lens. Now, the way they take their pictures, the mirror moves up, light goes through, hits the film on a film camera, hits the sensor on a digital camera. Aside from that, mechanically, they're pretty similar. Now, the great part about that is, is that for a lot of these cameras, like the Canon Digitals and some of the Nikon Digitals, you can do some swapping with lenses. Like I said, you can take an old Nikon lens and put on a new Nikon camera, especially the more higher end full frame bodies, not so much with the crop sensors. They may actually physically fit, but you won't be able to control the aperture or you won't be able to control other aspects or the machine won't talk or uh, utilize the focus assist that the upper versions of the Nikon cameras have. Canon, kind of the same deal. Uh, EOS, can you go to EOS, but you get into some problems once you get prior to the 80s with the Canons. So check that before you go buy it. In which case, other than that, if you're going to stick with the same system, it doesn't really matter, does it? So that's digital DSLR. But there's another version of digital camera that is really used a lot now, especially for those of us who do video, and that is the mirrorless camera. Now, the mirrorless camera looks just like these other ones, but there is a very big difference. The big difference is there's no mirror, mirrorless. That means that your sensor is right there through the lens. And there is some good and there is some bad with that. Okay. The good is, is that it's not as bulky, it's thinner than your standard camera. Okay. Your area between the lens and the sensor doesn't have a mirror in the middle. Okay. Secondly, you have a viewfinder on it and a screen on some of these, or a screen just on it without the viewfinder, depends on what model you have, that will more or less show you what you're taking the picture of, how it's going to look. Whereas a digital DSLR, the screen doesn't necessarily show you the end result. With the Sony's, a lot of times they do especially with the upper version of the Sony. Now, the downside is that you don't have the optical prism. So that means you use more battery. Okay. Which means that what you have here as a viewfinder is actually an EVF, electronic viewfinder, like a little TV screen. The good part about it is that if it's dark, you can kind of see a little bit better with these because you're seeing exactly how the camera's sensor is going to see it. With a digital camera, I mean a digital DSLR, you're seeing optically, which means you may see things differently than what's actually going to be taken in the picture. But the biggest gain with the mirrorless, now Nikon makes mirrorless too, and so does Canon, but primarily with Sony, is that you can take the lenses from the past. And I'm not just talking Sony lenses, because Sony isn't, doesn't go that far back in the past with no, film cameras. They were mostly video cameras, and then they got into digital photography because they went through Minolta. They bought out Minolta. And so, long story short, because the body's so thin, I can take lenses from the past. I can take lenses from like this Minolta lens, or Canon lenses, or Nikon lenses, or pretty much lenses from every type of camera out there. And I can make it work on my Sony. This lens right here, is actually a Konica, which is a different brand, and most of you probably hear Konica Minolta and your copiers at work. But Konica used to make cameras, and this is an old film camera. But with an adapter, I can take this and I can pop it on to my Sony camera, and then I can actually use this, albeit the aperture and the focus is all manual to take pictures. And depending on the lens, you can get some really sharp lenses. The neat thing is you can use Leica lenses with the correct adapter. You can use security camera lenses. You can use a lot of different lenses. Heck, this is a Canon lens, okay? A Canon lens with a Voltrix, Voltrix adapter on it, which means that I can take this and I can put it onto my Sony. 
Let me get this out of the way. Let's see, where are you at? There you are. And I can now shoot. Okay. And it'll do autofocus with the Canon lens on the Sony body. Which means instead of spending a ton of money for a Sony lens, you can save some money. Now, again, there are good and bad with that. The bad part is, is that sometimes you don't get to use autofocus, or autofocus doesn't work that great. But, by and large, mirrorless is becoming the way to go for a lot of videographers and photographers, especially people like me who do both. They are lighter, smaller, you can carry them easier, you can add a whole bunch of stuff to them. Either way, they're great. And as you get into cameras, the best advice I can give you is the following. When it comes to megapixels, anything above 10 is okay, it's good. Below 10, mm, but above 10, that means you can print an eight by 10 picture and you won't see too much pixelation. Actually, you probably won't see any with today's software. Um, anything above 14, 12 megapixel, and then you're sitting in the sweet spot. Anything above that is like gravy. Uh, 24 megapixel on today's cameras is probably what I would go with and feel good with. Uh, going beyond that to 50, 60, 100 megapixels, that's wonderful, okay? But the thing that you really matters is what are you gonna do with it? If you're a professional like me, we look at those because there's certain purposes for it. If you're at home and doing it for your own stuff, uh, the more megapixels, the bigger the picture, the bigger the picture, the bigger the file, the bigger the file, the more hard drive you have to have. So it becomes more cumbersome because you get less shots per card and it ends up costing you more. However, you can crop a little bit easier. You can do stuff, it, it helps you correct mistakes. For me, the idea is to not have the mistake in the first place. Learn to shoot the picture correctly, everything else will fall in line. So you don't need the extra real estate. But it's nice to have it if you're doing landscapes or if you're doing stuff that you need to zoom in more and you don't have the lens. Okay, put it that way. But the main point is the camera should feel good to you. If you like carrying around in a small bag, okay, micro four thirds may work for you. If you need, uh, full frame because I like shooting more at night. Okay, full frame may do a little bit better for you, but what matters is how it feels to you. So go to the to the camera store, and there are camera stores out there, not that very many, but there are some. And you find one, test out the equipment, hold it in your hand, try it out, see how it feels to you, see if it feels intuitive to you. You're going to have everyone tell you that one brand's better than the other. I've shot with pretty much everything I can get my hands on. Even things that most people never even heard of, like a Rapid Omega 200 or the old Voigtlander accordion style. The thing is this, you have to enjoy using the equipment. If it's cumbersome for you, if it doesn't make sense for you, if it's too bulky, if it's like I'm carrying a bunch of stuff, why? Then find a camera that fits you. If you're going to be outdoors a lot, find a camera that's more rugged. If you're going to be uh, traveling on an airplane a lot, find a camera that's maybe a little bit thinner. Find a happy medium. If you're going to do video, find a camera that can do video well. These are things that matter. Uh, these are things that you should look at. Not just the, the you know, every way who's telling you buy the latest and greatest thing. There are cameras that are older now that you can pick up dirt cheap that are still just as good and can still go out there. So my, my favorites that are out there, I like the Olympus. They're smaller. And yes, they're micro four thirds, but you know they have a rugged eyes outside on some of them. Uh, I like Fuji. Uh, the Fuji has a rangefinder look. Like is okay. I'm not a big fan of like in the sense of you know everybody buying one because like are super expensive, and like are more like a showpiece. You buy it because you can. Yes, they do good pictures. I've shot with the like a medium format before, and they do really nice pictures. But for the amount of money, I can get me Nikon, I can get me Sony, I can get me Canon, and get me all the ones that I can want to do what I want to do and still get that same work, workflow out without having to have 
the clout of having a Leica symbol on my camera. It's like buying Apple. So, case in point, whatever camera you pick, you should like film or digital. Look at what you're going to use it for. If you're the type of person who wants to take video of your kids growing up, photos of them playing sports, you may want to look at a mirrorless camera. If you like going outdoors and doing landscape and, and shooting pictures and you need to buy bigger lenses, Canon and Nikon are usually a little bit better because you can find older lenses that will give you that same range that are going to be a lot cheaper than going Sony or some of the other mirrorless. If you need something to travel a lot and you like to do landscape, especially landscapes, and you need something that can be rugged, Olympus. Olympus is really nice for landscape and really nice for, for that ruggedness and the ability to carry everything in one bag. It's really nice. Okay, whereas some of this stuff, I'm carrying about three boxes of lenses so this way I can go take pictures. But that's because I do it for work, professionally. Other people, you know, if you're just a traveler, you don't want to haul with all that stuff. It gets annoying. I know, you know, Marina used to get mad at me because I would haul with everything. She said it got annoying. I never really felt it was, but she did. But anyway, so we're going to do that. And right now we're going to uh, take a quick trip to see what's out there because, quite frankly, I need a haircut. Talk to you guys soon. See you guys in a bit. Here at Sunteon Tire and Auto Service, we pride ourselves on meeting and exceeding our customers' expectations. We take care when diagnosing your vehicle so that we can identify and repair it right the first go around. From axles, brakes, alternators, tires, and more, when it comes to your truck or car, customers trust us with their automotive pride and joy. It's because of the customers that we are here at Sunteon Tires and Auto Service. We have great staff and awesome prices. Give us a call at 559-587-5383. Now, thank you. Just got my car back and all I have to say is great staff, great work, and it saved me a ton of time and money. Today we need to go and get a haircut. Why? I need one. So we're here in Sama and I'm gonna go down to a friend of mine's, uh, Lou Hans Barber. They've been around like forever. And I'm with one of the owners, Jude. Uh, Jude. Say hi. Hi. So, hi, everybody. <laughs> so if you notice, we're actually wearing masks, and I hate wearing masks. But thanks to COVID-19 and the powers that be, we're wearing masks for everyone's safety. Yes, so, we are. So yes, tell us a little bit about your barbershop and how long you've been in business. I've been here since 1993 until present. Oh, this is, I don't know. 27, 26 years, something like that. A lot of years. years. It went fast. Yeah. Hey, the yeah, the COVID-19 stuff, uh, it hurt a lot of barber shops, a lot of tattoo parlors, a lot of beauty salons, a lot of uh, essential, or what is it, non-essential? Non-essential non businesses. And uh, it hurt us bad, you know? They should have helped us uh, maybe like to, uh, freeze the bills up or, uh, you know, help us out a little more in case this happens again. If it ever does, I hope they do a better job of taking care of the people that they're telling to stop working because that's not fair, you know? Stuff like that ain't fair to everybody, you know? We still got to pay our car payment. We still got to pay the rent. You still got to pay your insurance. You still got to pay for food, gas, you know? So it's rough. It's rough for everybody. That's why uh, a lot of people are upset, you know? Yeah, I know they, they like to say it's non-essential, but by the look at my hair, I think we can all agree that for some of us, it is essential to get a haircut. <laughs> um, now, that being said, uh, tell us, what makes a barbershop special as opposed to like a salon or, or some of the bigger stuff you see like supercuts and, and stuff like that, big chains? Why a small barbershop is always a better place to go to? You know what? Uh, I think they're all pretty good. It's just up to the person that works the shop. You know, you could, you have a... Uh, Good truck drivers, bad truck drivers, good police, bad, you know, you got good barbers, bad, you got everything in between. I think it's just uh, the person and is uh, he has to be a people lover. To be in this business, you got to love people. You got to like the people and, and you got to like uh, talking to people a lot and uh, and serving them, you know, and giving them what they want and making them happy, you know, and listening to, sometimes they'll tell you their problems, sometimes they won't, sometimes... You talk. Sometimes they don't want to talk. They'll let you know. 
you get the hang of it after a while, after so many years, you know. But yeah, uh, you know, I think they have it too at the big salons too and everything. It just depends on the person, like I said. Um, you could have a, 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 a good relationship with almost anybody. It just depends on the two people, if they click or if they don't. Yeah. But I think, yeah, they could have it anywhere. So, now, take a good look at this. <laughs> and take a good look at the floor, how clean it is. <laughs> and you'll see, when we're done, there'll be a rug. <laughs> so, it's rug time. So, let's go ahead and let's uh, get the weed rail and the lawnmower and let's get this haircut done. Okay. Okay, so I'm back outside and I can take my mask off now. So over here at Lujan's Barber, they do follow all the CDC guidelines and the COVID-19 social distance stuff, wear a mask stuff, as you can see from the haircut. So the question is, what was the haircut look like? Look at that. I can see again. Not only did he get the top of my head and the rest of me, but you also got the eyebrows, which, by the way, were actually covering my vision. Now I can actually see where I'm going. So, Luhan's Barber, they are open from Tuesday through Saturday, 9 to 5. Sunday, Monday, they're off. They're open for walk-ins and for appointments. Uh, it's a great place to go to. His dad, Dennis, and Jude, great guys. You get to know them, get to love them. They're awesome. They do awesome work. And again, that's here in Selma. If you're ever in the town of Selma or you live here, the address is 1807, so 1807 Tucker Street. That's right here by the uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, the City Hall. So it's great. It feels so great not to have all that extra hair. And I'm back with the haircut, as you've seen on the video. I'd like to thank uh, Jude and the team over there at Lujan Barber for the nice hairdo. It's awesome. i also like to thank Alejandro and the people there at Tantillon Tire and Auto Service in Hanford for, you know, supporting us and allowing us the opportunity to create their commercial for them. I hope you guys enjoyed it. More importantly, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, we will do more in-depth stuff on particular cameras, how to do some shooting. Again, we will get that video out there of the second part of making a movie at home. Um, I did find the file. I'm just going to reshoot it from scratch and I wanted to do it in a more cut down method so this way we can take more time because that section of using figures to do character movements or stop motion animation as it were requires a few things and I want to make sure I have a list made up so that you people at home can follow along can get software can utilize it and make these things happen in your own house. Again, be good to one another, take care of each other. Remember, there is a lot of stuff going on in the world and we can get past it. We can learn to live better and live together better and learn to forgive one another for all the stuff that we've done in humanity because humanity has done a lot of things to each other and we can grow. Aside from that, don't forget there's an asteroid coming that will fly nearby the Earth. There is no way our scientists could possibly be wrong even though they were wrong with other things in the past, like eggs being bad for you, now they're good for you. And smoking was good for you at one point, but now it's bad. Yeah, but anyway, they can't be wrong on the math, so I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good time. Have a good evening. Be good to one another. Stay safe. God bless.